For those of you all who've already seen the movie, you probably would remember seeing the part right at the beginning of Godzilla vs. Kong. That's where they explained that a storm, which was a rather powerful one at that actually, had taken over Skull Island, which then led to the island ending up completely uninhabitable. Now, that explains why there's a containment zone for Kong and Skull Island and all the other advanced goodies that come with it, for example, the artificial sky and the advanced climate modulating mechanism. All that's pretty cool, but having said that, there are also questions that arise. Questions like, what's causing these storms? What's the present status of the island? And most importantly, what actually happened to Skull Island? Well, look no further, because we're here to answer just that for you and to address all the queries that may arise as well. So, welcome to Factolic, and let's just get into it. Okay now, Skull Island still does exist, but there's a never-ending storm that even the elf of the island was having a tough time dealing with. The fury of nature is so much that Monarch had to set up a safe containment zone for our big boy Kong as well as for the other crazy creatures living in the island. The stormy background was clearly visible in the starting scenes of the film, where we saw Dr. Eileen Andrews and Dr. Nathan Lind hurrying through the pouring rain to get into Monarch's Kong containment facility. Yeah, that's just how Skull Island is now, all the time. It's kind of sad, really, to see the mysterious island in such a state of affairs, especially after we all initially expected the island to be the battleground for the clash. Coming back to the storm, the islands endlessly facing, it was even responsible for wiping out the entire Iwi tribe residing on these lands, only leaving the little Kong whisperer, Gia, as the last surviving member. Also, I don't need to talk about her relationship with Kong again. It's Skull Island that's been completely disregarded, after all. Also, there's no mention about what happened to the other majestic creatures of the island. But we do have some idea about the Skull Crawlers after seeing all those eggs and number 10 in action right at the heart of Apex. So what about the other creatures then? Leaf wings were visible too, and aquatic creatures like the mire squids, siren jaws, swamp locusts probably survived somehow. Other than that, we really don't know what happened to the others. Mother long legs, psycho vultures, skur buffaloes, spore mantises, death jackals, magma turtles, spirit tigers, fern birds, Vine Stranglers and Skull Island Deer were all MIA in the film. I mean, we've yet to see some of these creatures in action, but with Skull Island in such a perilous situation, we probably won't get to witness any. Talking about the nature of the storm itself and why is it even happening? Well, it's something that's pretty unnatural. You see, a prequel graphic novel to Godzilla vs. Kong, Kingdom Kong, actually shed some light on what the nature of the storm really is and how it came to be. Dr. Andrews blamed the state of the island on Monarch's meddling, but apparently the situation is more complicated than that. In reality, the entire storm situation can be traced to the events that happened in Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and to be honest, a certain titan might even be held for the entire fiasco. Which titan might that be now? Well, it's the one who's many, the three-headed destroyer, King Ghidorah. It's pretty clear in King of the Monsters that Ghidorah, in the process of terraforming the planet, created supermassive storms, and even after two years of his defeat, one of those storms remained and still continues to create havoc over the Pacific Ocean. Now, the storm actually remained there for two years and suddenly started moving towards Skull Island, but seems like before that, Monarch did try to divert the storm, but that ended in a complete failure. You see, the storm became anchored on Skull Island due to a vortex in the hollow earth entry point beneath the island. So maybe it's going to be there forever, I suppose? That's the reason why Skull Island is in such a perilous state, but it does still remain intact somehow. I don't know for how long, though. Now it's just a matter of how long will the island survive. As for the storm itself, Dr. Houston Brooks even called it a gift from the devil to remember him by. That's basically what's happened to Skull Island, and thankfully Kong found a different home, or rather his original home in the process. Having said that, you still got a feel for the place. I mean, Skull Island was straight up magical, and it's pretty sad seeing it in such a pathetic state now. 
all thanks to a supposedly dead King Ghidorah. And with that, it's a wrap for this video. We hope you enjoyed it thoroughly. Thanks for watching. Now, if you want to keep watching more videos like these, I have an idea for you. Hit like, subscribe, smash the bell icon too while you're at it. You're watching Factolic. And this is your host, Scott Leffler, signing off for now, but not for long. Peace.